Welcome to Running For Real, a global community with a shared love and curiosity for running. Together we reconnect with the reasons why we love to run and discover ways it helps us become better people. Whether it's the quiet moments of a morning run while the rest of the world still sleeps, or befriending the strangers next to you at the start line of a race. We are here to connect with others who see running as the common thread that weaves our lives together. Come join me, Tina Muir, as I talk with people from all walks of life, united by a love of running. Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode 372 of the Running For Real podcast. I am excited that you are here. Thank you for joining me today. And today is another one of those episodes where it is myself and a friend going over a conversation that is going on in the running space that we feel needs to be heard, needs to be talked about. And today that is about being yourself, finding yourself, finding your purpose and getting to a place where when people say things, whether it's just, you know, one person in your daily life or whether it's a group of people online, you are able to take those comments, maybe take them to help you learn, but also not let them drag you down. And so today I am very excited to bring my friend Matt Choi on the podcast. Uh, And Matt and I met a few months ago. You were going to hear how I came to know Matt and what I've really admired about Matt and how he has helped me to grow in this episode. But there is so much more in this episode that I think is going to bring a lot to the table and is a conversation that we need to have. It's a conversation that we've been shying away from a lot within the running community. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. If you are a Matt super fan, I totally get why you adore this person. Uh, Having been fortunate enough to spend plenty of time with him, I've really got to know him and he is how he comes across. Uh, And it's just been a beautiful thing for me to witness, to see how he has inspired so many of you. So I'm excited to introduce to you one of our sponsors, then we'll be right to this episode with Matt Choi. Thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this episode of the Running For Real podcast. I have been using AG1 for, well, since 2019, which is coming up on four years now, and it's going to give you those essential nutrients for long-lasting benefits. I have been using this for many years and especially right now with a book tour with all these things I have going on in my life my AG1 has been a critical piece of taking care of my gut health giving me focus and energy to help me with healthy aging and my immune health I love that it is one scoop in uh, some water every morning it is the first thing I do that's going to give me 75 high quality vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients it's that comprehensive nutrition in one simple scoop Uh, It is a ritual that I have every morning. I wake up, that's the first thing I do, and I know that it takes care of me. So it's so much more than just taking greens, as you might hear other things talk about. It's going to give you that comprehensive blend of core health products that are going to work together to fill in your gaps. So for me right now, with two young kids and this hectic schedule, I am missing out on some nutrients, and this is where I know I'm taking care of myself in that way. So as a friend of mine, you can get a one-year free supply of vitamin D D3 plus plate K2 by going to drinkag1.com forward slash Tina. That's drinkag1.com forward slash Tina. It is going to make it so that you have one thing to take. It will take care of you. It'll be there for you. You can take it on the go. We're going to give you that five free travel packs when you go to drinkag1.com forward slash Tina. I've been loving it for years. And those of you who um, have been signed up for a while would have seen that you've got a goodie recently. Anyone who was uh, an AG1 user when my book came out will know that you got a copy of the book as a gift from AG1 and that just speaks to the kind of people they are. They care, they care about you, they care about me and they care about the world. So go check it out at drinkag1.com forward slash Tina. Matt Choi, my friend, welcome to the Running For Real Pod- For Real. I can't even speak. Welcome to the Running For Real Podcast. <laughs> podcast. I'm not even going to edit this, Matt, because you know me and I'm going to keep it as it is. So welcome. I love it. I love it. It's uh, I'm great. I'm grateful to be here, Tina. We got to chat a little bit yesterday, but now we got to kind of do it on the pod properly. Yeah, I know it is. I love how much you and I communicate because uh, I feel like every time I talk to you, you've got something exciting that's happening for you. And um, I want to talk about some of those things, but I want to actually begin with how you and I 
connected and I know of you, I knew of you a few months before you and I met and and then we kind of you know got on immediately through our mutual amazing friend James Rowe um mm-hmm. but I I mentioned to you at the time that I had known I had actually come to respect you and like really give kudos and recognition to you after you made a a misstep a mistake in Houston uh, in uh, it was the beginning of this year, was it? 2023? Yeah. God, that yeah. feels like a long time ago. Um, and that was, well, I, why don't you share your version of this? And, uh, and then I'll say what it was that made me really appreciate what you did. Well, what, my version of what happened in Houston? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, which I'm sure people have heard, but maybe some people have, some people that haven't. Um, I ran the Houston Marathon this year, but... I had so many things going on and I ended up forgetting to sign up for the race. So three weeks prior to the race, I started reaching out to friends in the running space, run clubs, people like James Rowe, like people that I knew that were going to be at the race that maybe someone they had in their club or someone that they had in their community might've had an extra bib. So I could still run in Houston. Um, Not knowing how sensitive and how, you know, some rules are gate kept in the running community. I didn't realize that, I didn't even know what the terminology bib mule was at that point, but I ended up running a race. I ended up running the Houston marathon in someone else's bib. I ended up running a sub three hour marathon, which is a Boston qualifying time for my age group, which then created a version of, Oh, Instagram influencer is trying to be a bib mule and getting other people into Boston where the reality of the situation was as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, I just had, a lot of shit going on and I wanted to problem solve something that I clearly had made a human error on Mm. in terms of not signing up. And I ended up getting a lot of slack from the running community and having to deal with some backlash. And I think to Tina's point of maybe the video that she's referring to of when I addressed this issue, because obviously, you know, there was a lot of opinions. There's a lot of feedback, positive and negative that was happening around this situation and I ended up just making a video owning it and saying like, guys, like this wasn't me trying to cheat for anyone else. Like I just made a mistake and I ran into someone else's bib and I shouldn't have. And that video to your point, Tina, then became something of me highlighting the issue even further because the people that read the article, like that's a smaller number of people. And mm-hmm. most people that follow me aren't elite runners or they're not the hardcore runner. So they are people that are just getting into the sport. So I was then using my platform to educate more people not to make a similar mistake, which happens at almost every single marathon. Mm -hmm. And if you're just Joe Schmo, like you'll be able to run in someone's bib and no one's going to really care. But I think if you are someone that has any influence, if you're someone that's in the running space and you want to keep it pure, like doing what I did is not the right thing. And I think for me to highlight that and understand that and be aware of it, hopefully helps other people not to make the same mistake. I want to add some some color context, some layers to this. So for context, when did you start running? I know the answer to this, but for the community uh, listening, when did you start running? I started running two years ago, like mm-hmm. pretty seriously. Mm-hmm. And you were, so uh, the reason I bring this up is because this is not like you're a seasoned veteran who'd been in the sport for 15 years. You knew all about it. If people backtrack two years, that's, you know, 2021 oh. pandemic time. Yes. I'm a pandemic runner. And like, and prior to that, Tina, like I did a lot more ultra marathons, like, Mm -hmm. which is a lot more grittier. There's not many people that sign up. There's not many issues with transferring bib when only 200 people are racing in an ultra. Mm -hmm. So the marathon world was still relatively new. Like the first marathon I ever did was in my backyard and I did a mile loop for 26 loops. (laughs) So I was very just unconventional, like get it done, not dotting my I's, crossing my T's in everything. Mm -hmm. And why did you decide you wanted to address it head on? I mean, there's constantly things like this coming up in our space um, mm. where someone is the center of something, someone, it, someone, something is, is being, you know, really hit hard for a choice they made. Why did you decide to speak to it rather than giving out a textbook, uh, you know, just a blanket basic statement? Yeah, I think it's, it's like, it's like the old saying, like there's always three sides of a story. Mm. And I think at times it's easy on social. If you're in the wrong to just like ignore it, let it brush by, like, let it just go. Um, but I just felt like it's important for me to stand on my own two feet. And also, cause I'm coming from a place where that wasn't my intention. 
I didn't want the opinions of other people, of strangers that didn't know me, that didn't understand what really was happening to then be the headline of what's actually like what the true story was. So I think there's layers of that, Tina. But I think also it's just as creators, I think it's it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to like screw up. Like Mm. as long as you learn from it and you take it as an opportunity to hopefully help other people not make the same mistake. And like, that was my mindset. Like I already beat myself up a little bit of like, Oh my God, like I lost out on brand deals. I lost out on cap like money and like all all these other things of like, now my reputation's on the line. But what I didn't want to lose out on was my own morals and values as a human. Mm. Like to me, that stuff mattered the most when it came to social, like I want to make sure that through success and failures, most people only talk about, Oh my God, I ran sub three. I did this. I had this medal. And I think when you're actually being able to be human and relatable and showcase that like, Hey, we we all make mistakes and not being afraid to like get judged by them or also show them and put them out there. I think it's powerful. And, and, and hopefully it's inspiring for other creators or other athletes that are in the space because it's actually inevitable. Like we're all going to make a mistake here and there. And it's about how you treat yourself and how you own that failure and mistake that I think what makes character, like it's actually what is the definition of Mm -hmm. character. It's like who you are at your lowest and your highest. So I just felt like I wanted to share that and hopefully help someone else down the line because I have enough of a thick skin, Tina, to deal with it. But some people don't. Yeah. And you and I talked about some people that like, had gotten written up about them on marathon investigation who ended up like either taking their life or getting out of the running space completely. And I'm just blessed enough that I have enough thick skin to like take that criticism or that feedback and use it in a positive way. Yeah. And I really believe, I mean, you and I have talked about this a lot in the power. This is why that impressed me so much was because I also do speak to my mistakes, my failures. And I feel like every time someone like you or I, who does have a platform speaks to these things, it gives other people the permission, not even necessarily when they're in a situation like you or I might be, but their own version of it. Maybe they make a comment and they call a friend or someone they know who is uh, trans or non-binary, they say the wrong gender. And now they're panicking like, Oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. But if you know, if they see someone like you, you or I making a mistake and being like, I'm sorry, I messed up. Let's move on. Here's what I learned. Um, it gives them the permission to make mistakes too. Because as you said, there's so much out there of just, uh, you know, just, oh, just let it pass by. Don't say anything. Don't bring it up. Or the opposite of like, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have done this. And I really wish that I had da, 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 da. Um, just overdoing it um, and letting it define you. So I really just admired the way that you did that. Um, and also, like you said, there were so many people out there who had no idea about this. And now you've used the opportunity to help other people make sure that they don't make that same mistake or, you know, can't claim ignorance for it because you have shown them that this is this is the way things are do you feel like it did follow you for a while or is it still following you yeah i mean look there's always some there's always some cynicism or (laughs) negativity that is like i i think tina the the it followed me for like the initial like two months probably two three months but i think at some point tina like you know there's nothing when someone's negative especially in the comments around my community, it gets hard to be that person in every single video. Like I post a lot on socials. I get a lot of engagement from my community. And when you have someone that's constantly trying to poke at you, add in like their negativity or their cynicism in my comments or in my community, people are very active and snapping back at it. So I think it almost shows the true colors of the person that's providing the negative feedback as maybe they're just not in a good place mentally Maybe that it, like, you know, their enviness or their egos get in the way of them just feeling like this is that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. So I think it did follow me for a little bit. But I mean, like I said, you know, social media is it it's not life. Right. It's a piece of a business and it's a way that I'm able to put myself out there, inspire other people, make a business. But I would be not living in a real world if I only identified on the comments on social media, both good and the bad. Mm. So even when I had it at the worst, I knew that my intent as a human was not in what was getting written on the line. Yep. And I could sleep at night every single day knowing that that is okay. 
still to this day, people will like mention, oh, like the Bib Mule stuff or Houston. And I'm like, <laughs> honestly, Tina, it feels like so long ago. Like mm, I feel does, like yeah. what I've done, what I've done now. And not that I have to prove myself. Like I'm not in the mode of proving myself to anyone. I'm only trying to prove myself to myself, period. Mm -hmm. And I think through my own actions, who I am as a human and how I show up every day, people that have an opportunity to meet me or that I get to engage with, they can have their own answer on who I am as a human. Mm -hmm. And those people that want to put me in the box of being a bib meal and a cheater, like that's just their framework. And they might not ever get to meet me in person. Or even if they do, Tina, they're coming with the pre-assumption of who I am without mm -hmm. actually giving me a handshake or talking to me as an individual. And I can't change those people. And I don't really want to. Yeah. God, I love your perspective there. And actually, interestingly, recently I heard Oprah talking about this, about, uh, I don't know if you saw, but around when the fires in Maui happened, she and Dwayne Johnson set up a foundation for money to be funneled directly to the people of Maui who, you know, lost things. Um, in that fire. And she talked about how she went to bed that night when she set up so excited and she woke up the next morning to all kinds of nastiness. Um, and, but she had come to realize over the years that those comments she said, she could say, same as what you're saying, that's not me. Like they may have an opinion of me, but I know who I am. And they're not talking about me, the me I know. Um, and, and that was, you really just echoed what she said. And I think that's such an important point that we do let people, other people's opinions of us matter. But when you know who you are, it doesn't matter what they say, because you know that they're not talking about you. And obviously there are some, we all have our own insecurities that when someone pushes that button, they tempt that part of you that says, oh, wow, they are talking about me. But to, I really love that you had that approach um, with that. Is there anything else you want to say on that topic before we move on to some of this, the cool stuff that you've done since? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And no, I think the last thing I'll say, Tina, is that, you know, for anyone that is in this space and you're putting yourself online, you know, get a good sounding board of, mm. of other people that are in this space. I think it's important. And so if true. I didn't have those people, Tina, to help me navigate some of that stuff, like people told me like, and, and same thing that you said to me, right? Like it was like a, like, it almost felt like your PR team was like, so on point with how to deliver that message. Mm. And so much of like mentors I've had, had in the space that have been in the media world, the marketing world, the comms world, they've really helped me navigate through that situation. And I think it's important. And it's really why having a, you know, a community, a sounding board is important for people in our space, because at times you feel like you're on an Island on social. Mm. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't have those people in my corner to help me navigate that, I mean, Tina, you might not have, you might have a different POV of, of me if I didn't make that video. And if yeah. I didn't handle that situation the way I did with like mm -hmm. grace and honor in that sense. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people through the good and the bad, like having a sounding board is really, really beneficial. With your sounding board, do you have people in there who tell, this is something I've really come to value, who tell you what you need to hear, who tell you things that you don't want to hear because they know and they genuinely want the best for you. 1000%. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, like when I say sounding board, I, I, these aren't, shouldn't be yes men or yes women. Like, yes, I, I think you should have people that tell you straight up, like, Hey, that's not a good idea. <laughs> that's not a smart move or on the, on the flip end. Like, yes, that sounds amazing. Right. Um, I think people that are comfortable enough in their own skin to provide you honest feedback is the people that you should be looking for. Yeah. And it's what I would want to do for someone else. And it's exactly what I would want reciprocated. Right. And I think even for you and I, like we've known each other for a short amount of time. And I feel like we're able to be very transparent with mm -hmm. those opinions and that feedback um, because we both see things from a different lens, mm -hmm. but it's also great because sometimes those are the best people ha to have on a sounding board. Yeah. People that don't see the world, how you see it, because they're going to give you a different point of view. And I think for me, Tina, it's like having those people that are going to tell me, like their honest feedback. Thank you to All Birds for sponsoring this episode of the Running For All podcast and for supporting me in my journey. Today, I want to talk to you about the Women's Tree Dasher 2. Now, I will be wearing these as I start going through these major marathons where I work long days. When I was at the Chicago Marathon last year, I worked a 13 hour day, multiple days in a row, and I wore my Women's Tree Dasher 2 every day. They were incredibly comfortable. Even when I walked back into my hotel room late at night, I did not have any aches and pains. 
I love the amount of colors that they come in. Um, my favorite is definitely the Calm Cargo, which is kind of like a greeny colored. Um, as you know, I, I do love green as it is a nature color. Um, they are very comfortable. They have great stability. And of course, as it's all birds, they are passionate environmentally. They are doing the work. They are a B Corp and a highly rated B Corp at that. So that means they are doing what they need to do to be an environmentally sustainable company and relentlessly sticking to that. And so I encourage you to go check out the tree dashers if you have something for work, a work job that allows you to wear a pair of trainers or just for traveling for when you're on your feet for a lot of time or just day to day. You will often see me wearing these shoes. They are my go-to. And if you go to allbirds.com, you can go check them out. And also if you use the link in the show notes, you can get yourself a free pair of socks with your order. When you add those to your cart using that link in the show notes, go check it out at allbirds.com. So true. And I absolutely value that. I've come to value that so much over the years. And yes, like, likewise, you have, you know, moved into that one of those positions where I do feel like I can talk through things with you and you'll give me the honest truth. So on that note, I want to just share a bit. I want to, I want to talk about you entering into this running space. And I suspect a lot of what people got frustrated about, or maybe even people that continue to be frustrated with you is, is envy. Or jealousy because they see you know how how much you have how, these opportunities that have come up to you these brands that want to work with you um and having i want i've said this everywhere matt you know this but like i want to say it on my podcast as well like having spent that we did that race together peach tree uh fourth of july um seeing i mean probably 20 25 30 people come up to you over that time and say I started running because of you or you are my inspiration. It was, it was truly like just a beautiful thing to see of like just how much you mean to people, um, within the space, especially people who have previously not felt like they belonged. And so I would love to hear from you as a newer person into this space. What did you feel or what do you feel was missing that you have been able to kind of fill in for people. Um, yeah. What is it about you that you think people have come to appreciate? Yeah. Uh, Tina, I mean, it, it's one, it's so mm. humbling. Like mm. those moments where mm. I never thought that it would happen like this in the running space, Tina, like, you know, football was such a big part of my identity. And like the fact that like, I'm making an impact in this space that I like, something I never thought I would really get into. It's still like, I pinch myself at times. Mm. I think something that I'm able to do, Tina, in terms of bridging the gap is to your point, like I come from an athlete, I'm an athlete. I've been an athlete my whole life. And that's what I identify myself as. And running sub three wasn't easy, but to your point, Tina, like I did it in two years. People spend 10 years to accomplish this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I feel ever. that. If ever, it literally, and I mean, people came to me in New York and were like, Matt, I've been training 18 years to try to hit sub three and you come in within two years. And like, I don't take that for granted. Like I've been gifted by God to have an ability to be an athlete. But I feel like even more than that, even if you took all the accolades of sub three and the, the hundred mile rate, all those other things that seem crazy to the normal eye, I think bringing fun and enjoyment and not feeling like you have to get your validation through hitting PRs is something that I've brought to this space yeah. to just make it fun. Like why can't running just be like a leisure activity, like pickleball or like, <laughs> like, like playing pick up basketball. Like I, I feel like I'm so comfortable in my own skin. I don't need the validation from other people of you hit this fast time to then feel like I'm worthy of doing these races or accomplishing these things. And I hope that for other people that get to watch my content, they can see that you can also just have pure fun and bliss just by respecting the fact that you can move your body. Mm -hmm. Accomplishing a marathon is something that most people on this earth will never do, but it's an amazing feat if you put your mind to it, if you put your body to it. And a lot of humans can do it if they just put the time aside and they said, look, can my body move 26 miles or yes. 13 miles or whatever the distance. So I think through my content of what I eat in a day during a race, how I prep for something or showing the engagement that the community offers on a marathon day, mm. it helps to then I think inspire other people like, Oh shit. Like I could have fun at a marathon. 
everyone told me marathons suck. Mm -hmm. Everyone told me marathons hurt, but I see this guy eating donuts, having a beer, like celebrating with people that are cheering with him, even though they're strangers. And I don't know, Tina, I, I think something there, yeah. I've done the fast marathon, but I swear to God, the most impactful content has been not me just running fast. It's me taking time in these moments to talk to fans that have been helping me along this journey to, to do what I do, mm. engage with strangers, provide positive encouragement or feedback to strangers that I don't know, but smiling to someone next to you when they're really hurting can really help them. And I think there's these moments, Tina, where I don't realize the impact that's actually happening by me just being a human. Mm -hmm. Because Tina, I would do this even if I didn't have the following. Like, yeah. it's actually just how I show up in this world. Yeah. But now people are just like, oh, Matt's doing it for the cameras. Like, he's just doing it because he knows it's going to make a good video. And I, once again, to the what we talked about earlier, that opinion, that feedback, whether it's true or not, I know it's not. Yeah. And I can live with that and understand that people are going to have those assumptions. But in my mind, it's not true because this is how I show up every day. And if people knew me, they would know that it's just, oh, shit, that's just now getting caught on camera. But this is actually who Matt is. For sure. And I can absolutely attest to that, the time I've spent with you. And, and I want to highlight that I, I said this to you when, we, when one of the times we were together that um quite often people who are in a position like you are, you know, to an extent to, to what I am, but you're kind of more in the, the video documenting space than I am, um, are obsessed with their phones. Their phone is constantly in their hand. They're constantly checking things, um, fiddling with things. But you, again, as another thing I really loved was you are so present when you're with people. And I think that in itself speaks to what you just said there, that you're not doing this for, yes, of course, is it nice that you get to make this your living? Absolutely. But you have this ability of being in the moment in, in a way that I know very few runners are able to do. And, um, and you know, this with, with me, I've, I've told you about this, of like my past being all about eyes on the road and how much fun, you know, I remember you asking me in the 10 K mile five. And I said, and I say something like, um, we're half an hour slower than my PB. <laughs> and, and you were like, but are you having fun? And I was like, absolutely. Because, um, <sighs> it's just, yeah, it's just like, a, a, just such a gift to have that time with you, regardless of whether cameras are there or not, because it's just about being present. And I think that is something special about you as you really are camera or not able to be in every moment that you are in doesn't matter what you are doing. You just happen to now have cameras with you sometimes. Yeah. I, I appreciate you saying that, sharing that, Chia. I mean, it's, I think it's in a world where I understand that the media and the phone is powerful. I think to your point, when like there's moments to like break bread with someone, it's not the time to be on the phone and posting things. Like I can mm. wait an hour or two <laughs> hours. And then once this conversation or once this meeting is done, then like I, ha I have time and attention for those other things. And mm. I, yes, I think at times it gets very challenging because people are like, oh my God, but I have to make a social post or I have to like update or comment with other people. But in reality, like there's a time and a place for all those things. And there's a time to be super present. Mm -hmm. And it's actually something running has taught me more, Tina, is like mm -hmm. how to do those actively and having moments where you're building business or you're doing work stuff as well. And like, there's a time and a place for that. And like, I find my solitude to be those times but when I'm in moments to engage with people or, or, or new friends, like I, I think it's just, it's respectful to also respect other people's time and, and, and making sure that I, I don't, I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. And mm. I, I've, I've met other creators that do that. Yeah. They're just constantly, Oh my God. Like I, you know, my thing is more important than the present moment, whether it's in a group environment or one-on-one. -on -one. And it's just something that I want as I continue to grow. I, I, my challenge is can I continue to, to keep that in my practice? Yes. Yes. So true. Um, and I, I, yeah, I really appreciate that you're able to do that. Okay. So let's talk through what you have been doing this year. Um, you've had a focus each month you are doing something, uh, you've had quite a whirlwind of a year. So just run through what you decided you wanted to do in 2023, um, up to this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after Houston, I knew I was going to be in Austin. So two months, two marathons, 
I knew Boston was on the cards. I knew Chicago was in the cards. There were these like landmark races that I knew that I wanted to hit throughout the year. And I just started looking at my year and, you know, this is kind of how I set up a lot of my like challenges, Tina, or like, like, like memories or moments or experiences. Like I think for so many people, they wait till retirement to do the things that they want to do. Mm. And I'm fortunate to be in a position where like I get to control my schedule and I get to do the things I want to do and invest back into myself, but also the business. And in this lens, it became, Oh, can I accomplish a marathon a month? And from that point, after doing Austin, Houston and then Austin, I found other races within the calendar year that lined up really well for cities I wanted to travel to or like moments in the running space that I wanted to highlight and be a part of. And it has now led to us being in October and, and we're approaching Chicago, which will be my 10th marathon this year. I think I've done a couple others that haven't been like branded as marathons, but mm. um, covering the distance. But I wanted to do 12 marathons in 12 months one to challenge myself to see if it's like something I'm able to like one maintain my own health, maintain my own fitness. And I think the first thing I said is super important to me. Like I know so many runners that have now done it because of content and they're getting into it and they're doing crazy challenges, but their bodies are completely broken Yeah, and they're, they're injured and they're still running because it doesn't look good that they can't make videos every day and, and it hurts their brand. But like, truthfully, like I have no pain knock on wood, I haven't dealt with anything drastic where I'm like, oh my God, I'm fighting through a severe injury. And I think for me, that's been the biggest importance for me to do something like this. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, that's kind of the journey I've been on. I've gotten to see Tina at at multiple events throughout the year. (laughs) And Tina, the last thing I'm going to say on this is that I love (laughs) the running space because it's everywhere. Mm. I go to a city that I don't know anyone. If I go by myself or I go with my media team, like like I know I'm going to find a friend because mm. that's what running does. And I think for someone that's listening to this podcast, like understand that, you know, if you've been seeking community, if you've been seeking challenges or, or, or getting better in your own wellness, like there's something special about this space because it doesn't take much, but the people that are in it, they're super, super community driven. Yes, for sure. Do you have something like when you host these events or when you go to these events, do you, I'm always like scanning for people who kind of appear to be standing by themselves or appear like they're taking that step of like showing up to something when it's scary. And when I do know someone has come when they were scared, making an effort to really, you know, either introduce them to someone or make them feel like giving them a good chunk of time to talk to. Do you tend to seek out people like that? Um, Is that a priority for you? I I think at times, Tina, it happens like, organically Mm -hmm. because when i go to a lot of these events tina like i'm not going as like matt Choi influencer i'm just going as like another person that's part of it right you just happen to stand out with your your height and your booming voice that (laughs) yes i'm very loud at times and i have typically a gopro or iphone on me and i'm just like yeah it looks more like crazy but i i think my my energy in general typically attract someone that might be more quiet or shy just because Mm. I'm, I'm willing to engage. And even if it's just saying, hello, like, what's your name? Who are you? And like, even that little exchange, I think there's something powerful to help someone like feel like they're, they're good. They're more comfortable. I'm very Mm. comfortable going somewhere, not knowing anyone and just being willing to just either talk or not talk. Yeah. And I think the, the, for, for me, it's, I don't think I'm like intentionally seeking it, Tina, which I probably can, especially in these moments where I'm like hosting a shakeout. And I know mm. people are coming at one and they take a picture with me or, or say what's up. But even when I go to other people's run club, like I like to just like mingle around. And I just think I just do it very naturally just because the way I grew up and having to move around as a kid a lot, it comes very natural. I wouldn't say I'm actively like, oh my God, that person, I'm going to go make a beeline to them because they don't, mm. they're not talking to someone but I will do my best to actively try to do that as I'm anywhere I'm at. Yeah. So let's, let's do that backtrack a bit with your, with your story there. Uh, you mentioned you're a football player. Um, you mentioned you bounce around a lot. Is there, what would you like to share from, you know, your, your past that you think has been relevant to where you are now? Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing Tina is that, you know, I grew up with a single mom an older brother and just like not, I think the biggest thing is adaptability. Mm. 
it's the ability to be comfortable in spaces that that aren't comfortable. And whether it's moving around, going to elementary school, to middle schools, to middle school, to high school, to making new friends, to, to losing friends, to moving to a new state, um, playing different sports, being on different teams, I've truly learned the power of community, but also the ability to connect with people mm-hmm. and meeting people where they're at. And I think that's something that has come very natural to me. It's why I'm able to be super present in the conversation, whether it's with a founder of a brand or if it's a fan or if it's a stranger or if it's someone that's making my food at a, at a restaurant. Like regardless of who it is, I think all of us have a story. And at times, some of these people don't get the opportunity to get it like they don't get it spoken. They don't mm-hmm. get to talk about it. Right. So because I had to move around as a kid a lot, going to places where I don't know anyone, I'm very comfortable to engage or be comfortable in my own introvertedness too of like, all right, like I don't have to be the star of this show. I could just be a member of this organization and be comfortable in my skin in that fashion as mm-hmm. well. Um, but I think if I think about one thing, Tina, that that's something that highlights for me. It's so many people are afraid to meet new friends. So many people are fr- afraid to meet new communities because they're like, oh my God, how am I going to interact? I think moving as a kid so much and being the new kid on the block yeah. forced me and my brother to get super comfortable handshaking or talking to the person next to you. Because if you want to meet new people in a new city or a new place or a new club, like you're, you're going to have a jaded point of view if you don't talk to anyone versus ingraining yourself into the community. Like those two people will have two different experiences when they go to a run club, one person that doesn't talk to anyone and then someone that's willing to go talk to everybody. And I think finding a happy medium through my time of traveling a lot as a kid forced me to like get really good at both. Mm. And I think that's been part of my superpower is that Tina, you think I'm extroverted, which I very much can be. Mm -hmm. I'm loud as hell and I'm able to, to operate in those environments. At the same time, I love my solitude. I love the ability to be in my own space and time because it's where I'm able to reflect and think on my own. So that's kind of something I would say that helped me as a kid that translated from a kid. Yeah. So, I mean, and so your brother is very much the same way. My brother is very much the opposite in the sense that he's super extroverted. He's very comfortable and you'll get a chance to meet him in in Chicago, but he's very much on the extroverted side and is Mm. uncomfortable in his, like in his solitude. Mm. So he almost like, that's why I said, Tina, when you meet my brother, you're going to be like, shit, Matt is more <laughs> calm and introverted. Like, I'm loud and I could turn it on. Yeah. But my brother, like, that's typically like, he's mm. very much in that space. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Um, and I do, I would say people, I think, assume I'm an extrovert as well. And I'm very much can be either, like, I, like you said, similar to you, I can be kind of the one out speaking, but I also am quite happy on my own. Uh, I need that time on my own. Um, and then being a football player, um, well, first I've got to ask you, like, if you, if you had told Matt back then that you'd be in the running community, what would he have said? I would have been shell-shocked. <laughs> um, it, I w- you know, I had my identity so caught up in, mm. in football. Like, that's mm. who I was. Like, that's what I did on social. That's what I posted about, like, I was consumed with my passion for a sport and it would have been very difficult for me to comprehend me doing a different sport, let alone running. I, it just, it, it wouldn't have, it, it wouldn't have processed in my brain, you know I mean? Mm. I, 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 I don't know. It would have been very difficult for me to understand it. I think to your point though, of even like, what do I, like what your question earlier of what do I feel like people like get from my content or like, why do they feel so connected? I think, this is a sport that isn't the sexiest people don't wear like fancy stuff or like, it's not like quote, it's not branded as like the most fun activity. Mm-hmm. And I think when you're able to bring some of the, like the, the joy I got from football and people cheering and people able to wear like cool, like gloves or visors or like making things look cooler. There's something about that as well, Tina, with like, with shoes, with shorts, like, sunglasses like there's ways to make running feel like oh like i could look cool doing this thing and i think there's elements of that too um but football matt or five years ago matt would not have imagined tina that i would be this deep into this space now that i find myself 
Friends, I am so excited. We are continuing our relationship with Two Before, which is a black currant pre workout drink. What are black currants? They are a berry. They are delicious, kind of slightly sweet, slightly tangy. They have been scientifically proven to increase cardiovascular endurance, speed up muscle recovery, reduce inflammation, and support immunity. While I have been working through my injury, I've been using my Two Before to give my body an extra boost in that recovery period while also using Two Before in my workouts that I I'm doing in the runs that I'm able to do because things are kind of crazy right now. So studies have found that New Zealand black currants can improve athletic performance by 4.6%. So if you have a goal race that you are looking to really do something at in the next few months, this is the product to going to help you get over that line to give you that performance boost. You can take it before you start. You can take it during the run. Um, it is that is one smart berry that is going to give you the multiple benefits of improving your endurance, speeding up your recovery, supporting your immunity. And it is just a delicious taste as well. Black currants is something that in England we really enjoy and love. And you as a friend of mine can go to two before dot com. That's the number two before dot com and use code Tina to get yourself 30 percent off. That's code Tina at two before dot com. Go check it out. So then speaking of your advancements and Matt, five years from now, what you just brought up for me um, shows we are not moving along in our journey towards becoming the sustainable runner. Matt Choi, where, where did that go? That is still happening in the back burner, <laughs> Tina. It's just sure. not like it's, it's, it's so much <laughs> in my mind. Do you hear me in your voice, in your head? Sometimes you're like, damn it, Tina, like... <laughs> Uh, you know, I was thinking about you when I was in Berlin because <laughs> Berlin decided to use recyclable cups, mm -hmm. not the paper cups that all of North America races typically use. The only negative with the recyclable cups, Tina, is that like you the can't reusable break them. cups. Yeah, yeah. The reusable ones, yes. Mm -hmm. Like they like people throw them on the ground still and like they're harsh. Like, they, like when you step on them, like you can yeah. twist your ankle. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started to realize that like the 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 model of being able to like squeeze the cup and drink it. Like you can't do that with reusable cups. Mm, um, but I was true. thinking about you just on that trip of like, damn, like this is a good alternative to paper cups. But then the question for the runner itself, as they're trying to drink that water, it's a little bit harder to like consume it as mm -hmm. the actual athlete. But trust me, Tina, you are always in my mind when I think about, <laughs> is it a sustainable practice? Is this, <laughs> I am I that. traveling too much? <laughs> the answer oh, is yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, actually, on that note, this is a good place to say this. I found out the other day that New York has now uh, dropped their policy around bag, uh, vests that you can carry. You can wear a vest now in New York. You can't carry a bladder in the back, but you can have the front bottles, yeah. uh, which is going to be, I think, a game changer for things because of what you just mentioned about the cut, the reusable cups, if that's where we're headed. Um, or like, you know, as I've talked about with you, like holding onto a cup, having a reusable cup of your own, um, having your own water bottles means you can already have your fuel in there, your electrolytes in there. So I am excited that New York is doing that because I suspect that means the others will start to follow suit. And then hopefully, you know, well, and on that note, I'd be curious with your thoughts there. What are your thoughts? Would that be something you would see yourself doing, carrying your own fuel in a vest or not? Because you need your nice, you need your like bare shirtless <laughs> look to, to match. <laughs> you did wear a vest I, for Leadville though, so... That you need a vest because I was yeah. carrying all my all my uh, buddy's stuff. But, yeah, we're going to get to Leadville um, in a minute, but yeah, I answer love that. to response. Yes. Um, my response would be, I would de definitely transition maybe into a water bottle okay. where I could then carry the fuel and then refill like the, the bottle up with water at, at, at the aid stations. Mm -hmm. Um, I think wearing a vest, full vest for a marathon, I, I don't know. It just wouldn't be my stick. Just like, just cause I know that I would chafe in those areas, especially if I was shirtless. Um, but, but Tina, once again, like it just, I think it's context. Like, mm -hmm. am, am I trying to PR or am I yeah. trying to like just run it for fun? So those things would all kind of contribute to that answer. But okay. I think it's awesome. You know, like even Berlin, I don't think they allowed vests, you know? Yeah. And so I think it's, it's one of those things where hopefully, you know, it starts with the world majors and then it kind of goes from there. It trickles down to the other ones, mm -hmm. but yeah, that would be, that's awesome to hear from New York though. 
Yeah. Okay. So I want to go to kind of the give back side of what you're doing. Um, you and I had a really special moment when we were sitting at lunch in, in, uh, Atlanta being that, um, uh, her name has escaped me and she's probably going to listen to this. Um, we had someone come up to us the Kyle Betsy, Peace Foundation, and the Kyle Peace, but I think Betsy was the one that came up to us. Uh, and Kyle and Brent, uh, Peace were there from the Kyle Peace Fa- Foundation. Yeah. Um, and they, we had a conversation with them. Um, and it was just a really amazing moment. They just happened to all be at lunch. Um, you got to talk to a friend of yours who was also being a guide and, um, you've kind of been on this journey, although, you know, I suspect it's been there all along with you and you can obviously confirm or deny that, but you are getting to a point now where you're starting to find ways to support others to within the community. You ran Leadville, um, you ran, the, how many miles did you run? 35? 38. 38. 38. So you can t- share about that. And then also, you know, the idea that you want to start doing things for others in the community and why that's import- an important layer for you to add to your running. So start yeah. with Leadville if you want. Of course. Um, Leadville was uh, obviously selfishly, Tina. I mean, it's a race that I want to accomplish. Mm-hmm. But I knew that for me being more in marathon shape and not having an opportunity to be on trails a lot, like this would be a good challenge for me to like experience Leadville in a, in a capacity of support. Mm-hmm. And most people would be like, why would someone with his own following want to support someone that has less followers or right? Like it, it's like it's almost people couldn't comprehend it. But for me, it's not about that. It's like, at the end of the day, I want to be a friend that's a yes friend. Someone needs something from me. They need support. And in this space, Tina, it's not money. It's like literally physical labor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Am I willing to stay up 24 hours to help a friend that's not really like a best friend, Tina? I just met this guy a couple months ago. But the fact that like I'm crazy enough and that I'm willing enough to like drop my own ego and help someone achieve a goal. Mm. I think it just further showcases that like, it's not always about me. And I love that aspect that I'm able to like have enough humility in my own brand and my own self that like, I'm willing to help other people achieve what they want to do in this world. Because Mm. at the end of the day, if more people are on that path, this world is left in a better place. Yes. Leadville in specific, my friend, Nate Boyer, who has a foundation called merging vets and players where former athletes and then veterans have a community after they hang up their uniform is, is the foundation he was running for. And I had met him a couple months ago and he told me he was running Leadville and, and Tina, he was going to do it by himself. Yeah. No crew, no pacers. And I'm very confident that he would have accomplished it. Mm-hmm. It would have been more challenging for him to accomplish his goal of sub 25 to get the belt buckle, but he would have finished it. I mean, he's a former, you know, green beret and he's a really mentally tough dude. It was a really fun experience and a challenge for me physically Mm -hmm. dealing with elevation and, you know, being more in marathon prep. A lot of people don't know that I've done ultras myself in the past before people really followed me. So I've had an experience doing 50 mile races, 100 mile races, but doing it at elevation in Leadville, Tina, was a challenge. And it humbled me truthfully. Because I realized that you're not only fighting the distance and, 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 and the lack of sleep, but you're fighting elevation and our bodies are just not designed to breathe at that space mm. and to do physical labor. But I say all that to say it was one of my most enjoyable experiences and my one of my most enjoyable 24 hours of very little sleep, but mm-hmm. being fully supportive for a friend and his goal mm. and being willing to sacrifice time, physical labor, and and just like media as well, like to like help someone do that. So for me, it was really fun and enjoyable. And it's something that um, hopefully next year I have an opportunity to, to, to do the full hundred. Yeah. And with that, um, you giving up your, your time, your energy, your physical body to, to do this. Uh, what would you say to someone who is, you know, I, I, I am, as you know, I talk about this often about guiding. We've had conversations about it. Um, and people often say to me, but yeah, like I, you know, I'm training for something. I've got something on my own that I'm working on. I, is this going to, you know, detract or take too much away? Um, would you say that, how, what would you say to someone who is hesitant because they think it's going to affect their own stuff? I mean, I, I understand why someone would feel that way. I think the best thing you can do is one, 
you know, humans at some level are all, we're all selfish. Like we have things that we want to attain. There's goals that we want to achieve. And I think it's important to go do those things because you need to fill your cup up before you can fill up anyone else's. So if you're feeling like you're at a place where like there's so many of these goals that you're trying to achieve and you haven't done them, then like I would say go do those things. And when you're in a different headspace, maybe you're going to say to yourself, like, I've kind of checked off the list. Like I've ran fast. I've gotten into the Boston. I've gotten, I've done all these things. And I think as people do that, like they'll have more abundance of a mentality of like, I could go mm-hmm. do something else. Like, maybe mm-hmm. I can help someone else. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's a problem, Tina, that some people want to like achieve their goals and, and, and to do those things. But I think the bigger question is like, why? Mm-hmm. Like, why is running fast going to make you feel like you've accomplished something greater? Or like, like I think that asking why to a lot of those questions is important. And that's kind of where my mind would go. I don't mm-hmm. think it's good or bad. I think it's just for each individual. I've done the selfish thing of running sub three, getting into Boston, recording myself doing this. So like, I fully understand that side of it. But as I sit here now, Tina, you, you know how many people ask me, Matt, wh- when are you going to run fast again? Mm-hmm. When are you going to go for a PR? And like, it, it, it's no different than when someone asks, like, why don't you drink? It's like, why do you care? Right. <laughs> it's like, why does it bother you? Is, is it uncomfortable for you that I'm not drinking with you? Is it uncomfortable for you that I don't always feel like I need to hit a PR? So I think that's kind of where I go. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm very comfortable, Tina, once again, in my own skin and the judgment that I get both good and bad, I want to make more impact than, than I leave in this earth. Right. And if me just running fast is that, if that's the only way that I can make impact and I'm pigeonholing myself, Yes, I love the opportunity to run fast and I will run fast again. I will hit a PR again, but if I only get my validation from doing that and building my brand around just that one thing. I would be doing exactly what I did to myself when I played college football, Mm. where I felt like that was my only identity. I'm just a football player. Like I'm just going to be the jock. I don't want to just be that person. I want to be able to do an impact in so many different ways and being a guide, pacing other people, helping people achieve their goals. It's that old Denzel Washington quote of each one, teach one. You then empower someone else to go do that for someone else. And then once again, to the conversation of the the world becomes a better place. If me being sac, if I sacrifice my own ego and put that to the side and say, I don't need to run fast, but I can help this person achieve something that is their North star. To me, that's everything. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. You give back, you document, uh, don't, what's your phrase? Document, don't create. Yeah. Document, don't create. Um, you document you um, are showing people a way of challenging yourself, of pushing a boundary without it being this extreme thing. Um, And like you said, doing it in a healthy way. And now you are going to embark on something that is kind of a little bit counter to all of those things, except for the document piece. So tell us what that is and why go that direction. Yeah. I mean, I I think there's moments for all of us, right? Like everything I just said, this is someone's going to listen to you and be like, Matt is a hypocrite. (laughs) (laughs) I get called that all the time. (laughs) And I think it's somewhat valid and somewhat not valid. Mm -hmm. I believe in leaning into the unknown. And that's how I found myself in this space, Tina. Like you, if you, you and I, if I never got into running, we would never have this conversation, Mm -hmm. right? We would never have met. I would be probably working a corporate job still and just like going through the motions of being a six figure corporate employee. So I think that there's power in leaning into things that you don't have the answers to. I think there's power into, into challenges that are both mental and physical. And in this case, there's even more power in learning more about where you came from. And I think for me, Tina, that's the biggest thing. And and the thing I'm referring to is called the four rivers trail. It's a trail that covers almost the entire length of Korea from the city Seoul all the way down to the coast of Busan, which is the west to the east coast. It's 393 miles and I want to cover the distance in 15 days. If you do the math, like it's actually exactly 26.2 miles every day to cover 393 miles. That's kind of amazing. (laughs) It's almost a blessing. And the goal would be to do, to come up, to accomplish 15 marathons in 15 days. Now to someone that's like, you know, Matt, you're going to break yourself off. How are you going to do this? How are you going to like, I think what I've been telling people, Tina is like, 
you know, before I ran a marathon, I never thought I could do a marathon. Before I did 50 miles, I was like, oh my God, I've only ran 26 miles. Before I ran 100 miles, the furthest I ever ran was 50 miles. So there's so many answers and lessons that we can learn as humans in the unknown. It's stepping into that thing that seems so audacious, that seems so crazy, but that's actually where we learn. Like when you keep doing the same thing that you've always done in the gym or in your running routine, then like your mind starts to get closed off into the opportunities and the possibilities of what the human spirit, body and mind can actually do. So for me, a lot of this challenge is the cultural like understanding as well as the physical component. Like I want to go learn and seek the knowledge and experiences that my parents kind of had to go through and like where they grew up mm. because I haven't been back to Korea since I was seven years old. So 21 years ago, the physical component is what most people through social are going to be like, this guy is crazy. But once again, if we, if we break down, like what does speed really mean? What does hard really mean? It's all relative speed for Kipchoge is a speed that most people can never touch. Mm-hmm. And just because you're slower or faster, it doesn't mean that like you're better or worse. It's just, you need to control what you can control. 15 marathons in 15 days, Tina, like people have done 50 marathons in 50 days. So for someone, they're going to be like, Matt, mm-hmm. that's a walk in the park. For someone else, they're going to say it's impossible. Mm-hmm. So I think for humans, and this is my message and this is my goal. And, and, and hopefully within the content I'm able to produce, people can understand that the only person that you should ever compare yourself to is yourself. And I feel like I'm in a position where people keep asking me, like, how do you train for something like this? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't have the answer. I've never done something like this. So I can't give you the answer how to exactly train for it. But just like the hard is relative, for me, I feel like this is a challenge that is attainable for my experience of a runner in the current state. If you ask me, Matt, from two years ago when I first started getting into doing just a mile a day, I would say this is ludicrous. But I've built myself, I've armored myself mentally and physically to believe internally that this can be accomplished and I can story tell it in a way that I'm in control of the story. So that's a little bit of a long winded answer of what it is. No, and it. it's kind of my mindset around it, Tina is like, I love the fact that I'm comfortable not having all the answers. And I think for so many people, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're just someone that's getting into the space of running, like you don't need to have the program to make you feel like, I'm doing the thing. Sometimes the act of just doing it is you learning. But so many people, because we live in this world of information, everyone wants the perfect program or the perfect way to get started. When in reality, you putting on your shoes, lacing them up and stepping outside is the first thing that needs to happen before all the other stuff. I don't even know if I can have a question to finish off with that. That was kind of like mic drop done, complete. Um, wow. Thank you so much. That was so insightful, such a good reminder. And it sounds to me like you don't even really have that fear of what if I don't do this? Because what if I don't complete this? Because you've already done the processing around, you know, I'm here to find out. 1000%. I mean, Tina, like it's, if I don't accomplish it, I'm going to story tell about what I learned and why I failed. Yeah. And from there, it'll be motivation to then go do it again or attempt it again. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe this is like something that we ended on is like the fear of failure and the judgment that we get if we fail. If more people realized and took their failure as an opportunity to say, this is a lesson, like I'm going to learn from this. You wouldn't be so scared to put yourself out there to be exposed, to be, Mm -hmm. to quote unquote, fail. And I've gotten so comfortable, Tina, with the opportunity to fail that the thought of it doesn't even process in my mind. It's like, yeah, like if I don't accomplish it on the 11th day, if something happens to me, I'm just going to say, well, I gave it my best for 11 days and let's figure out how we can either continue or how we can regroup and do this again in the future. And I think for more people, it's like that, that risk over regret. Like I'd rather risk failing than regret never attempting it. And that's just how I live this life. And I want to continue to live in that fashion. Mm-hmm. I love that so much. I'm right there with you, my friend. Um, God, this has been such a joy. I feel like I could talk to you for hours more and we will, but uh, this is all the listeners are going to get. Um, where can people go find you? Where's the best place to to get the content? Yeah. I mean, depending on how you consume content, 
Short form wise on Instagram, on TikTok, Matt Choi underscore six. If you guys like longer form content, you can check out my YouTube channel, just Matt Choi, and you'll find a lot of like longer vlog and, and, and longer form content there. Mm-hmm. Okay, Matt, thank you so much. I appreciate you and all that you bring to this world. You know that, and I can't wait to see what the future has in store for you. Thank you so much for having me, Tina. I'm super, super grateful for our friendship and excited to continue to connect as we uh, meet each other randomly <laughs> or at events and <laughs> everywhere in the world. <laughs> Love it. Before we go any further, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Running For Real team. Without them, I would not be able to do barely anything compared to what I'm able to do today. They are behind the scenes. They are there for me. I am just so appreciative of them. To Jeremy Nessel, our podcast editor, audio consultant, and someone who's been with me since the start. To Sally Pontarelli, our content and operations manager, who is there day to day doing all the things to help me be successful. To Kelsey Wang, our head of design, and Louise Murphy, our associate designer. And finally, to Sandy Gutierrez, our photographer and content strategist, I am appreciative of all of you and wouldn't be able to do what I do without you. Definitely go give him a follow if you do not already. I really, really love his content and what he is doing for the running community. I think there was definitely a gap there and he's filling it and making so many people feel welcome. I want to thank you for listening today and encourage you to go check out the link in the show notes to find all the places Matt is going to be, as well as our sponsor links by going to runningforreal.com forward slash episode 372. If you have a minute and you could go subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast player or even leave a review of the podcast on the Uh, on your favorite podcast player that would be a massive help as would as you know leaving a review on amazon of, of becoming a sustainable runner those of you who already have i really really appreciate you remember to check out the links uh, of our sponsors for this episode in the show notes and that is ag1 you can get that one year free supply of vitamin d plus five free travel packs by going to drinkag1.com forward slash tina also to all birds you can get a free pair of socks using the link in the show notes Uh, When you add that to your car, along with your order, definitely go check out those dashes. Those are my favorite. And also to Two Before, for a limited time, you can get 30% off Two Before. You've heard me talk about what a critical role it has played in my life over the last few months. You can get 30% off using code TINA at the number two before.com. So two before.com. You can also get those links in the show notes at runningforreal.com forward slash episode 372. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next week. Thank you.